Well, look at this. Two unlikely visitors roaming the streets of Spokane today. Yep, it's a pair of bison. Apparently they escaped from the ranch on Spokane South Hill, but after a few hours of wandering around, the owners and Spokane police were able to corral the animals and get them back home safely. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Crempton News First at Four. I'm Tom Sherry. Welcome everyone, I'm Whitney Ward. We will have a little bit more coverage on that bison chase that took a couple of hours today. We'll touch on that a little bit later in the newscast. But first, Tom, we want to talk about what everyone else is talking about and just how stinking hot it is outside right now. Absolutely. We have dangerously hot weather that we're tracking now. Should get over 100 degrees on Thursday and Friday. So everywhere you see shaded in orange, that's the heat advisory through Friday evening. Everywhere you see shaded kind of in red or purple, however you want to describe that, uh, Central Washington, Washington, the lower Columbia Basin, almost all of Oregon, at least east of the Cascades, an excessive heat warning in effect. We're going to see temperatures really get hot out in central Washington, you know, 107, 108 degrees. It's going to be like living down in Arizona. I mean, really dangerously hot weather on the way. You take a look at the current temperature. We're at 93 degrees right now under partly cloudy skies. Nice to have that breeze out of the southeast now at 10 miles per hour. We'll look for temperatures in the 90s for the early part of our evening and then overnight only dropping down to 65. That's not a misprint right there, Whitney. Do you see it? 103 degrees. That's the expected high tomorrow and we'll look for hot temperatures over 100 on Friday for the weekend. It's crazy to say that it's going to cool down to 94, but yeah, it's going to cool down by almost 10 degrees on Saturday. 94, we'll see 92 on Sunday. I'll have the rest of your seven day forecast coming up in just a few moments. But first, I want to let you know that we are tracking several active wildfires in Washington. The four largest burning fires right now are across Okanagan County in central Washington. So here are your latest updates today. The Anglin fire near Tenasket is now burning 17,000 acres across Okanagan County. That fire is only 50% contained. There are level two evacuations in place for Remke, Remke Road and Siwash Road and level one evacuations for the Cayuse and Island Mountain areas. Now the second fire that we're tracking is burning near Tenasket. It's the Green Fire. Fire crews say about 800 acres have burned from the Green Fire so far. Level 1 evacuation order is in place for that area. According to the Okanagan County Emergency Management, J.H. Green Road is closed to everyone unless you live on that road. And Tom, crews are also working to put out a fire on the Colville Reservation. In our last update, the greenhouse fire now 74% contained. And evacuations have all been reduced to level ones, which is good news. That fire has charred uh, more than 5,000 acres. It's located east of Columbia River Road, outside of Nez Pelham. And the Calacum Fire in Chelan County now 80% contained. There are still some level two evacuations in place, though, for Kingsbury, Jump Off, and Clockham Roads, again, in Chelan County. Level 1 evacuations are also in place for Tarpiscan Road, Timberline Lane, Sharon Lane, and Big Springs Ranch Road. This fire has burned about 3,300 acres of land so far. We also want to remind you again, there is a burn ban in place basically for the rest of the summer until September 30th. That was issued by DNR because of this just prolonged hot, dry weather we are all experiencing right now. Campfires are still allowed under this order as long as they are contained to a fire pit in state forest campgrounds. It has to be in that approved container though. The order does not impact any rules at state parks. And for the latest on all of these fires that are continuing to burn across our area, just text wildfire to 509-448-2000 and we'll make sure to send you a link with the latest information. Well, we have disturbing news to report. The Black Lives Matter mural that's located in downtown Spokane, it's been vandalized. This comes just over a little over a week since the mural was completed. The building owners are hopeful of getting the issue resolved, and they're also looking into a protective layer on top of the paint that will withstand any future vandalism. The mural was a collaborative effort from the media company 72 and 16 local artists, all of whom are black, indigenous, and people of color. This quest for justice, for freedom, for the rights of the black people will not end here. Coming up on Creme 2 at 5, we hear from the artist whose work was vandalized. Just despicable, mm -hmm. absolutely terrible. 
All right, new today, Bloomsday is going completely virtual this year. Organizers made that decision as we continue to see more coronavirus cases here locally. So what exactly does it mean that it's going virtual? Well, you will still get your race number and then you'll get instructions in the mail in early September about how to participate by walking or running on a course of your choosing. Then all you have to do is submit your finish time on the Bloomsday website. After that, you'll then be mailed your Bloomsday finisher t-shirt. And if you already have registered for the in-person race, then you're automatically signed up for this virtual race. You can also choose to defer your registration to next year's event. Registration for this this year is $25. It's open until August 26. Then Bloomsday is now the second local event to be canceled just here in the last two days. The Coeur d'Alene Half Ironman was canceled yesterday. Race officials say they took their direction from local health leaders in making that tough decision. Well, Washington counties hoping to move on to the next phase are kind of being put on pause right now. Governor Jay Inslee issued that pause as we continue to see more coronavirus cases continuing to pop up in lots of different places across the state. So tonight, Regina on is joining us from the newsroom to explain what this pause actually means for countries co counties here in our area. Regina. Yeah, well, Whitney, Governor Inslee has indefinitely suspended all Washington counties from moving on to the next phase of reopening. So, for example, here in Spokane, we're in phase two and will stay that way for the foreseeable future. Governor Inslee initially paused reopening at the end of June and extended the freeze for another two weeks into mid-July, which was set to expire yesterday. Well, as of today, five counties are in modified phase one, 17 are in phase two, including Spokane, and 17 counties are in phase three. There there are no counties in phase four right now. This comes after the state rolled back restrictions on restaurants, bars and entertainment. And starting tomorrow, alcohol cannot be served after 10 p.m. Bars and restaurants in counties in phase three cannot seat more than five people per table. And starting August 10th, wedding receptions are banned and wedding ceremonies and funerals are limited to 20% capacity indoors. And the hope of the new restrictions is to simply try and slow the spread of coronavirus across Washington state. Live here in the newsroom tonight, Regina on Krem 2 News. All right, Regina, thank you very much. Coronavirus cases again still spiking here, especially in eastern Washington and in parts of central Washington. Today, Spokane Health Officer Dr. Bob Lutz said we just simply are not done yet. We want to take at, uh, take a look now at the latest numbers that we have. These are actually yesterday's numbers because we're still waiting on the numbers to be updated for today. We just saw this graphic, but let's take a look again. 83 cases bringing the total number so far. This is as of yesterday to 3,507 five new deaths now for a total of 52 since this pandemic began. Now, Dr. Lutz is particularly concerned, he says, with kind of this dramatic increase in hospitalizations and deaths. The latest data indicates that one in four people who end up in the hospital here in Spokane could ultimately die from this disease. Now, most of the deaths right now still coming in older age groups, but it is affecting younger patients in their 20s and 30s as well. And as of today, Dr. Lutz believes we're just not through the worst yet. The numbers you're seeing today are somewhat reflective of what we will be seeing probably even more so over the next few weeks. It's just very consistent with what we have predicted to happen. And unfortunately, I don't necessarily think this is the peak. I think we will continue to see a rise over the next couple of weeks. Dr. Lutz also says we are still seeing a considerable lag in test results. So people are having to wait 10, 12, 13, 14 days to get those results. That means that the numbers that we're seeing right now are actually reflective of the virus spread two weeks ago. So it'll take another two weeks from now to actually understand the picture of where we are today. It is also a similar trend in North Idaho. And let's take a look at those numbers. The death toll has dramatically increased there over the last few days as well from just one death at this time last week to eight as of today. Panhandle Health started seeing the upward trend last Thursday. The numbers have continued to grow almost every day since. Well, Gonzaga University is now letting students know that what they can expect in the fall. University leaders are asking professors to decide if they want their classes to be in person or online. 
Students should expect most classes to be held online at least half of the time. Every class will have a remote delivery plan, so if a student needs to quarantine or self-isolate, they can complete their classwork without physically attending class. School leaders do still want to offer courses with in-person uh, classes, including labs, clinicals, or similar work. These in-person classes would be following social distancing rules. GU is also no longer requiring first and second year students to live on campus, but if a student needs to live on campus for any reason, they can. Students will be sent a survey on August 3rd asking how they would like to take classes this fall. University President Thane McCullough plans to hold a town hall webinar tomorrow at 4 p.m. and then again Friday at 11 in the morning to take any questions about these changes from students and their families. Well, negotiations continue in Washington, D.C. on that second wave of coronavirus relief intended to help Americans through this pandemic. So Republican and Democratic leaders right now have not yet reached an agreement, and it's on several different issues. Those include a GOP proposal to protect businesses and other entities from COVID-19 related lawsuits. The GOP has also now proposed the HEALS Act. It would give Americans another $1,200 stimulus check, but would reduce a federal unemployment insurance benefit from $600 a week to $200 a week. 